What happened at the very moment of the Big Bang? Arguably, that's the most profound question that scientists have ever asked. If we can understand that very first moment, then in principle we can understand everything that came afterwards, the entire evolutionary history of the universe. But to understand this moment requires a completely new way of describing physics. We need a quantum theory of gravity. That's because at the moment of the Big Bang, everything in the universe was crushed into an infinitesimally tiny point. Now, under those incredibly extreme conditions, the force of gravity would have become as strong as all the other forces of nature, like the electromagnetic strong and weak nuclear forces. This means we need a new language to describe the physics of that moment. Now, understanding quantum gravity and what happened at that moment is so important that Stephen Hawking described it as knowing the mind of God. But there are good reasons for thinking we might never be able to probe the very first moments of our universe. There are three reasons why this first moment of the universe might be inherently unknowable. And the first comes to us from one of the most underrated but important physicists of the 20th century, Kenneth Wilson. What Wilson showed in essence was that as you zoom out from the very, very tiny scales, smaller than atoms, to larger and larger scales, what's happening at short distances gets washed out and doesn't affect what's happening at much bigger scales. For example, Isaac Newton didn't need to know about the structure of atoms in order to understand the motions of the planets around the sun. And this means that what happens at the tiny distances involved at the moment of the Big Bang are unlikely to leave any measurable effects on the physics of the universe at large, which means that in experiments today, we're very unlikely to get clues as to what the laws of nature were like at the moment of the Big Bang. The second reason comes when we think about a hypothetical experiment where we might try to recreate the conditions that existed at the moment of the Big Bang. Now, to probe the energies involved in quantum gravity, with current technology, we would need a version of the Large Hadron Collider that was roughly the size of the Milky Way galaxy. But for the sake of argument, let's imagine that money is no object and we can build our galactic collider. We spend thousands of years accelerating particles around and around in a circle, and then we smash them into each other. Now, these particles have so much energy that they end up probing the physics of quantum gravity. But we kind of already know what will happen we'll end up concentrating so much energy into such a small volume that we'll collapse those particles into a tiny black hole. Now that means that if we want to know what's happening at shorter distances, down at the scale of quantum gravity, it's hidden behind the event horizon of that black hole, which is a boundary from which nothing can escape. So we might scratch our heads and go, OK, well, let's build an even bigger collider. We'll go to even higher energy. But what happens then is you make an even bigger black hole. So it seems that the laws of physics are saying that even in principle, it's impossible to probe what happens at the distances where quantum gravity becomes important. The third and final reason is due to a process that cosmologists believed happened at the very first moment of the universe. This is cosmic inflation. Cosmologists believe that in the very, very first instance of our universe, the universe expanded exponentially quickly. In about a tenth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, the universe swelled in size by a factor of a hundred trillion trillion. Now those numbers are probably more or less meaningless, but to help you imagine it, if you took a full stop and expanded it by the same amount, it would end up about a hundred times larger than the Milky Way galaxy. Now, inflation is needed to understand some of the peculiar properties of our universe. For instance, if we look that way forever, and that way forever, we find that those two opposite patches of sky are more or less at the same temperature and density. But this is really hard to understand because in the normal Big Bang theory, those two bits of space were never in contact with each other. So how did they end up looking the same? Well, inflation solves this by saying that they were once in the same place and then blown up incredibly quickly, spread to opposite sides of the universe by inflation. But inflation comes with a sting in the tail. Because of this incredibly rapid expansion of space, any information from what happened before inflation will never reach us. It was carried way, way, way beyond our cosmic horizon, which means that ultimately, if inflation is right, the very moment of the Big Bang will be forever inaccessible to us. But even if we can't probe the very first moments of our universe, we might be able to get some information on inflation itself. Inflation would have caused incredibly violent ripples in the fabric of space and time, what we know as gravitational waves. And thanks to an experiment called LIGO, we now know that gravitational waves really do exist in our universe. 
In principle, the gravitational waves produced by inflation should still be echoing around the cosmos today, and there are a series of experiments planned in the near future that hopefully will be able to pick up their signature, which would give us access to the highest energies and the very earliest moments of our universe imaginable. If you'd like to know more about particle physics, cosmology, and the quest to understand the very first moments of our universe, then you could try reading my book, How to Make an Apple Pie from Scratch, in search for the recipe for our universe. Now, the title is actually inspired by a quote from Carl Sagan, which is, if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. So this isn't a cookery book. It is actually about the search for the origins of matter. Or you could try watching some of my previous talks at the Royal Institution, which are linked in the description. Thanks very much.